Most of my videos usually delve into dam operations and statistics. Well, in this video, I have something entirely different. Today, we're exploring the most extensive dam removal in history. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Time Bomb. Let's get started. You may have noticed an increase in the number of articles focusing on the removal or bypassing of the Glen Canyon Dam. While this debate is as old as the dam itself, the voices have grown louder as we continue to deal with the ongoing Colorado River water crisis. Well, this video is not about the removal of the Glen Canyon Dam. Today, we're taking a look at the Klamath Dam Removal Project. This ambitious effort aims to remove a total of four dams to restore the health of the Klamath River ecosystem. Before we get into the details of the dam removal project, let's first try to understand some context here. The Klamath River Basin straddles the border of Southern Oregon and Northern California. The Klamath River has been home to several hydroelectric dams for decades, and these dams have successfully provided electricity and water to the local community. But that came with a significant cost to the local culture and environment. So what exactly does the Klamath Dam Removal Project entail? Well, let's take a deeper look. The project involves the removal of four hydroelectric dams along the Klamath River. They include the John C. Boyle Dam, Copco No. 1 and No. 2 dams, and the Iron Gate Dam. These dams have been in place for many years. Copco Dam 1 was constructed between 1912 and 1916, and Copco 2 was completed in 1925. The J.C. Boyle and the Iron Gate dams were completed in the 1950s and 1960s. These four dams have a combined capacity of 163 megawatts and are located about 190 to 225 miles upstream from where the Klamath River meets the Pacific Ocean. The removal process itself is a complex and carefully planned operation. It requires extensive engineering work to ensure the safe dismantling of these structures. Engineers also have to manage all of the sediment that has built up behind the dams over the years. When these dams come down, so does all of that sediment. After many years of delays, and this project has been debated and delayed for many years, dismantling of the first of the four hydroelectric dams is already underway. Demolition of the Copco 2 Dam in Siskiyou County, California began in June of this year. Deconstructing a dam is obviously a slow process, but the Copco 2 Dam should be deconstructed by the end of September 2023. Once the Copco 2 Dam is out of the way, it allows water in the three remaining reservoirs to start to draw down. The next part of the process is over at the Copco 1 Dam, where construction crews, or should I say deconstruction crews, will perform what's called a drill and shoot procedure. It's essentially drilling a 10-foot diameter outlet tunnel 150 feet deep into the concrete structure of the dam, leaving a 10- to 12-foot plug of concrete in place. Then, come January, they'll blast through that plug, allowing water and sediment to pour through the opening. Now, I definitely want to be there to capture that on video. Over at Iron Gate, the lowest of the four dams, Crews are currently testing the existing outlet tunnel to make sure it's ready for the critical job it'll have to do, that of a massive bathtub drain. All that water and sediment behind the three remaining dams will eventually flow through that outlet tunnel. Starting next January, the three reservoirs behind the remaining three dams will be drawn down at a rate of about five feet per day. This will be carefully managed so not too much of the water flows through and potentially damages the Iron Gate outlet tunnel. An estimated 20 million cubic yards of sediment has accumulated behind these dams over the last century. About 5 to 7 million cubic yards of that will wash out during the drawdowns. To make sure they remove as much sediment as possible, crews will actually use fire hoses to blast sediment from behind the reservoirs to prevent future erosion. Once the drawdowns are complete, the remaining three dams will be taken down all at the same time starting in June of 2024. The deconstruction method will be different at each structure. At Iron Gate, Excavators will bite chunks out of the massive earthen dam and feed them to an endless convoy of dump trucks. At Copco 1, crews will drill small holes in the base of the dam and pack them with dynamite. Then they'll just blow the whole dam up. 
Nah, just kidding. Unfortunately, <laughs> these explosives will be used to break the monolithic structure into much smaller, manageable chunks that will then be hauled away. Along with the dams, the powerhouses, the penstocks, and all the outbuildings will be dismantled as well. The steel will be recycled, and any hazardous materials will be hauled off to the appropriate disposal site. Any concrete, rock, or earth used to construct the dams will be blended back into the surrounding landscape. All told, the removal of these four dams entails the demolition of 100,000 cubic yards of concrete, 2,000 tons of steel, as well as the excavation of 1.3 million cubic yards of material. Total cost for the project is estimated at around $450 million, and when complete, the overall project will be the biggest dam removal in United States history. So why are they removing these dams in the first place? Well, one of the primary concerns surrounding the Klamath dams was their environmental impact. Those dams have been disrupting the natural flow of the river for over a century, blocking the natural migration of salmon and steelhead trout. This has had a devastating effect on the fish populations in the Klamath River system. Removing the dams is expected to help restore the river's ecosystem by allowing fish to migrate freely and hopefully recovering their populations. It is a crucial step in preserving the biodiversity of the Klamath River and its surrounding habitat. In addition, the removal of these dams is expected to improve water quality in the Klamath River, which will benefit both the environment and the communities that rely on that river for their water supply. The Klamath River Basin is also vital for agriculture, and there have been long-standing conflicts over water allocation between farmers and conservationists. Balancing the needs of agriculture with those of conservation has been a significant challenge in this region. Well, just about every region I cover, but specifically for this region. And this dam removal project is part of a broader effort to find a sustainable approach to water management that benefits both the farmers and the conservationists. While dam removal is uncommon, it is getting more prevalent as some of the dams in the United States are getting very old. According to the American Rivers Organization, 111 dams were removed in 2018. While most of these dams are very small, some larger dams have been decommissioned. The Elwha Dam, I'm not sure I pronounced that right, probably not, but the Elwha Dam in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington was dismantled back in 2012. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's continue the conversation in the comments section below. And as always, I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really value your support.